Brits are known for their great television, but hey, even we make mistakes from time to time. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 horrifically stupid British shows. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be taking a look at the most bizarre concepts that were seemingly scraped from the bottom of the barrel. Number 10, Sex Box. We're kicking it off with something that somehow managed to run for three years. And for any of you who are wondering what this show is about, then it's exactly what it says on the tin. In a few minutes, a couple will enter this box, they'll have sex, and then immediately afterwards come out and talk frankly about what they did. Hosted by Steve Jones and Godella Likens, a professional sexologist, it would bring in participants to talk about lovemaking on national television before taking this advice into the fabled box and getting it on. After the deed was done, they would re-emerge and talk about their experience. So how are you guys? How are you feeling? You look a bit blurry. Yeah, I feel a bit... Yeah. <laughs> the blood's rushed to this head now. <laughs> It's undeniably bizarre viewing and even managed to make it overseas. What are your thoughts at the end of the evening? I think that we've had missing conversations about sex in this country in particular. Number nine, Geordie Shaw. We have Jersey Shaw, Made in Chelsea, and The Only Way is Essex. So it apparently made sense to bring this much used fly on the wall reality TV concept to England's North East. The midnight out, what better? for Geordie boys than having a nice kebab. Going through the high octane ups and downs of Newcastle's party scene, the production that brought us Charlotte Crosby and Vicky Patterson has more fake tans and low cut vests than a night out in Magaluf. You said to me, Bethan, I like you, but you know when I turned around, you were necking on with Abby. The show is mostly people necking on with each other and drunken shouting, which sounds like an absolutely lovely time. This isn't the party that we were hoping for. Number 8. Naked Attraction This bear all Channel 4 show that you certainly wouldn't want to watch with your grandparents is truly one of the strangest television concepts ever. Inside each of these coloured pods is a brave naked singleton. One of them will be picked to go on a date. Considered to be a dating show with a twist, love seekers are given the chance to choose a potential partner based on the appearance of their bits and pieces. People's bodies are slowly revealed from the feet up, which is degrading enough already. Please reveal the bottom half of the bodies. But it gets worse, as people are eliminated one by one, which means they have to do one of UK TV's most awkward walks of shame. We've all got a naked body at the end of the day. No one's as perfect. We so don't. might as well embrace it and enjoy it. Number seven, who's doing the dishes? This mishmash of formats is the program that nobody asked for, but somehow seemed to find its way onto our screens for a couple of years. Guess what? I'm not doing them dishes. Hosted by 90s Irish boy band sensation Brian McFadden, four, shall we say, lucky contestants would get to dine in a celebrity's massive house and throughout the week have to guess whose abode it is based on not so subtle hints left lying around the place. Well, why would right? the last clue be the one who left? Why would it be the Let, one who left? left? Oh man, it could be any of them. The climax is the big reveal. If they guess right, the famous owner does the washing up. If they guess wrong, then the task is theirs. Go on. Get out of my kitchen. Number six, Splash. Take all of the spectacle, star power, and international appeal of the Olympics and chuck it into a pool at Lutton Sports Village. Scatter a few desperate celebrities, and we have our next horrifically stupid entry. <laughs> Medalist Tom Daly would be tasked with teaching familiar faces how to perform specific dives as they progress through to a final, and the result is cringeworthy beyond belief. Granted, the dives weren't always awful, but the show contained a lot of filler material. 
from training montages to a lot of high-fiving and nervous interviews. I did, I battled with myself, I conquered myself, and I emerged a little bird. Number five, Dapper Laughs on the Pull. Commissioning this former Vine star for his own TV show was, by all means, a horrifically stupid idea. So much so that it received numerous complaints about its sexist content and was promptly pulled after being on air for just over one month. Uh, come to pimp your penis, how you doing? All right. All right, yeah. The controversial comedian Danny O'Reilly was faced with a lot of backlash, including a very uncomfortable Newsnight appearance after much of its content was scrutinized for having a dangerous attitude towards women. You've said Dapper Laughs is an extension of yourself. He allows you to do things you wouldn't normally do and you blame it on him. It doesn't sound like satire at all. It sounds like an excuse. Well, that's not the attitude that I did have with it. The premise that was his alter ego would offer dating advice to members of the public, interspersed with banter and insults aplenty. Now, what we've got to do is work out which group is fitter or, in our case, more accessible. Number four, just had two of us. Scarring audiences and, quite literally, participants for life, this program brings in members of the public, friends, couples, and family members to design a tattoo for each other. I think it's quite cute. Presented by members of Geordie Shaw and, later on, Joey Essex, this often hard-to-watch and always ridiculous production truly pushes the boundaries of how far people would go to appear on television. Why would you do that? Friendship-destroying and relationship-endangering, some of the chosen tattoos have been truly horrendous, and not only are they performed on national television, but they are permanently engraved onto the contestants. Number three, you're back in the room. And just when we thought we'd get through the 21st century without a primetime show about hypnotism being created, this came along. <laughs> Hosted by Philip Schofield alongside resident illusionist Keith Berry, contestants would be called on stage to complete a series of simple tasks while under hypnosis. The result was, obviously, extremely cringeworthy and would often result in slapstick-esque antics in front of a live studio audience, without much else to it. See, I'm being groomed currently. Here's what the team need to do. Working together, they must... It's hard to say whether or not these people were genuinely under a trance, but we don't want to watch it long enough to make a judgement. Another one! Well played! Number two, Flock Stars. Some might remember this, others might not, but for those in the latter category, the premise is simple. A group of TV personalities attempt to master the art of sheep herding. Actually, she's quite erratic sometimes. As soon as you bring her into the field and you let her go, she's just off. Featuring the likes of Phaser from N-Dubs, Tony Blackburn, Wendy Peters off Coronation Street, and Leslie Joseph, the final goal was to be the best sheep herder of the series, a title that was eventually won by Strictly's Brendan Coles. Once Brendan had relaxed, he and Hoggy made fast progress. Away, away, Hoggy. And the dancing shepherd started to cast his eyes on the prize. A stupid show with one of television's worst catchphrases, it's time to release the sheep, this rural farce was angst after just one series. Look at that! Where are they going? Minds of their own. Number one, dogs might fly. There are so many unanswered questions about this one. How did Sky think of the concept? Did it require much thinking? Why did Jamie Teakston agree to this? We have our final 12 dogs. Let the adventure begin. One thing that's for sure, though, is that it deserves its spot as our number one horrifically stupid TV show. The good news is, most of the dogs are absolutely fine with the racket and can't get enough of the wind through their fur. Twelve abandoned pooches were given a second chance by being thrown into the pilot seat of a plane and taught how to operate a small aircraft. Shadow Nails turn two. 
But next is the first of the key maneuvers. Although there were some surprising results, it has to be one of the most bizarre things we have ever seen on our screens. Straighten up, straighten up. Hey, shadow. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.